Well, hey again, this is Dave Debow from DaveDebow.com, and this is the second video in a series of lessons that I'm doing for you, all about the importance of raising capital in order to grow your investment property portfolio so that you can be financially independent. And that means that you're not reliant on your job for your income. If you choose that you don't want to continue working at it for whatever reason, you're not reliant on a shaky public or private pension to get you through so that you're not reliant on mutual fund managers uh, to make a living for you in, in later years so that you become truly financially independent. On the, the first video, we talked about um, some startling statistics about real estate investors in Canada. On this video, we're going to switch gears a little bit and I'm going to be showing you what the true value of an investor is to you, what I call the lifetime worth of an investor. And when I do my um, investor traction workshops across the country, this is probably the number one aha light bulb moment that my attendees have. It really blows their socks off. I think it's probably going to blow your socks off as well. And I'm going to be taking you through the exact same steps uh, to show you this and teach you this and, and show you how you can find out the lifetime worth of an investor for you, just like I do for the attendees of my workshop. So I hope you enjoy it. More importantly, I hope you profit from it and check it out. Talk to you on the other side. So what's an investor really worth to you? This is something that nobody ever really thinks about. And I know that I didn't think about it for a long time, even though I was aware of the lifetime value that a customer from other businesses I've been involved in. Uh, and at the time when I started thinking about this again, I was doing rent own deals and somewhere I've been reading around and some business stuff. And I came across that whole concept of lifetime value of a customer. Again, I decided to apply it to my real estate business specifically with regards to money partners. So let's take a look at this and take a look at what an investor is really worth. And we'll use my rent to own strategy as an example. So when I was doing rent to own, I figured out that on average, my net profit after I paid out my investor partners and mortgage payments and all that kind of good stuff, uh, property taxes, etc. At the end of the deal, taking all of the different profit centers into account, I would earn approximately $40,000. Now, part of that was up front, part of that was with cash flow, part of that was at the end of the deal with appreciation, etc. But altogether, on average, it was about $40,000 per deal in the area that I was uh, investing in, which was Kamloops. So, uh, let's say one deal equals $40,000 profit to me over a three, maybe four year period, on average about three years. And in Kamloops, at the time I was doing this, uh, single family home getting into one was about a $350,000 property, which means with 20% down plus property transfer tax and closing expenses, that would be about an $85,000 investment. So I thought, $85,000, that's quite a bit of money. So probably it would be one investor would only be able to do one deal with me. So here's our investor. Let's call him Jim Bob. So uh, Jim Bob invests $85,000 in a deal. Uh, by the time everything washes out at the end of the term, I should altogether have a profit of about $40,000. So one investor, one deal, $40,000 profit, right? Makes sense. Well, guess what? I was wrong. The reason I was wrong is because if I did a good job and I got my investor the kind of returns he was happy with, or even better than our investor Jim Bob, he becomes what is often called in real estate jargon, a happy camper. All right. So he might think something like this. Now he'll either miraculously come up with more money to do another deal at the same time that the first deal is going on. So he might have two deals going on at the same time, or once the first deal completed, then if he's happy, he's going to reinvest his money with me for a new deal. So I found on average that being conservative, one investor would do two deals with me over that relationship, that, that working relationship. So if each deal is worth $40,000 and our investor Jim Bob does two deals with me on average, that means that he's worth $80,000, right? Makes sense. One investor, two deals, $40,000 per deal, $80,000 total worth 
of that investor to me. But guess what? <laughs> Once again, I was mistaken because I forgot to take into account that birds of a feather like to flock together. So that means that chances are Jim Bob hangs around with other people of similar financial status. And what do wealthy people like uh, Jim Bob do when they're hanging out with their friends? Well, they tend to talk about how well they're doing with their investments. And the conversation might go something like what you see on the screen. Probably not, but something along those lines. So uh, if you do things right, you may get another referred investor. And if that investor, again, does an average of two deals with you, that would be another $80,000 in profit. Now, to be conservative, what I came up with is for every two regular investors that I get, I can get one referred investor. All right, so it's not one for one, but for every two investors I have, I can get a referral to another investor. So that means that this is the, more, the most difficult part of the map. That means that one investor is actually the equivalent of one and a half investors because for every two investors, we'll get a referral. Does that make sense? So one investor is the equivalent of one and a half investors. And if we look at what that looks like, instead of it being $80,000 value for one investor, that turns into $120,000 lifetime worth of an investor to me for the rent to own strategy. So again, these are the numbers that I figured out for myself being very conservative. And I found that for my students, my clients, these numbers tend to uh, ring true for them as well. Uh, however, the value of their deals might be greater. So their lifetime value might be higher. Now think about it. What if you got two or three or maybe even four investors? You do the math. It's huge. So big idea, always remember the lifetime worth of an investor to you. Bottom line, just one investor partner can literally change your financial life forever. Now, how about if we do a little bit of work and figure this out right now for you? So there should be a PDF handout somewhere below or beside this video. Go ahead, pause the video for a minute, click on the button, download the handout, and then print it out so that you can actually jot this down for yourself. You can figure this out for you for yourself. So this is definitely something you're going to want to do. So go ahead and pause the video right now while you do that. Now, first of all, let's take a look at what kind of real estate strategy do you focus on most of the time? Now, I know a lot of people who are active real estate investors might do a variety of different strategies, but typically there's one that they really specialize in, one that there is their bread and butter. So focus on that one for the purposes of this exercise, all right? So are you doing buy and hold of normal single family homes or perhaps buy and hold of uh, basement suited properties? Perhaps you're doing buy, fix, and sells or flips. Uh, you could be like me and you're doing rent-owned deals. Or perhaps you've moved into small multi multifamily properties. So that would be duplexes up to fourplexes or what I call small to medium multis, which would be five to ten units. Maybe you're getting into bigger multifamilies, so 11 to 40 or really big ones, 40 plus units. Or perhaps you're doing some other kind of real estate investing. So first of all, figure out what is your primary strategy. Next step is to determine your profit per deal. And hardly everybody, anybody does this. Every deal is different, so it's hard to figure out an average. But we need to kind of come up with an average for this to work out. So when I'm talking about the total net profit, I'm talking about your profit after you've paid out all of your expenses, including your investor partners. What is left over for you? Now, I'm, uh, and you've got to take into account the multiple profit centers in real estate. So it's not just appreciation. We're also looking at instant equity. If you got a deal on the property in the first place and when you bought it, if you bought it under market value, that's instant equity. Uh, you get a profit center of leverage, which means you don't have to come up with the entire purchase price of the property. You, you can buy it with as little as 20, 15, or 20% down. Uh, forced appreciation means anything you do to increase the value of the property. Uh, mortgage or loan pay down is paying off your mortgage over time. Cash flow is king, of course, and that is your net profit at the end of every month. Uh, market appreciation is what a lot of people focus on, but that's just one of the profit centers. So that is the value of the property going up over time. And depreciation 
is a tax saving strategy, which may or may not make sense for you, depending on what kind of real estate investment strategy you're focusing on. Okay, so I've been doing workshops across Canada for quite some time now, and I've asked people at every single workshop, what is a deal worth to you? And these are the averages we've come up with across the country, and these are conservative averages. So uh, especially if you're in a really hot market, like at the moment of this recording, uh, Vancouver is pretty hot, Toronto is very hot as well, Those, these numbers could be low. If you're in a smaller market and not such a robust market, might be a little your numbers might these numbers might be a little bit high, but on average these are conservative numbers. So for single family buy and hold strategy of single family homes, we came up with a one hundred thousand dollar profit over seven to ten year hold. For single family homes or suites, we're looking at one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars. Again, longer term type deal, seven to ten years. Buy, fix, and sells or flips, those are short-term deals, typically three to six months, but the profit margin per deal is lower. So you're looking at about $20,000. Rent-to-own deals, a little bit longer strategy, so about three to four years, $40,000 profit on those kind of deals. Uh, small multifamily properties, $150,000, again, seven to 10 years. Small to medium multifamilies, five to 10 units, that would be $300,000, again, seven to 10 years medium to larger multis, 11 to 40 units. Again, every deal is going to be different, but on average, we could look at $450,000 over uh, 10 years. And larger deals, obviously, kind of the sky's the limit, but let's put $700,000 as a very conservative number for those. So, And then if you're doing some other kind of strategy, like self-storage or commercial properties, each deal is going to be a little bit different there. All right, but that gives you an idea. So let's take a look at uh, coming up with the lifetime value, lifetime worth of an investor to you. And here's how the math works. So again, go ahead and grab your PDF handout, print that out so that you can follow along with this. So first of all, uh, we figure out what the average net profit of the deal is for you. And then we're going to divide that by the total number of investors you need per deal. So I suggest if you're doing single family home deals, if you're doing flips, if you're doing small multis, uh, try to work with one investor per property. If you're, if you're doing larger multifamily properties, then you're probably going to have to be using more than one investor. So divide by the total number of investors per deal, and then multiply that by the average number of deals that you're going to be doing with an investor. So um, typically, just to be conservative, we'll say that's two, except for the case of flips which I would say it would be six deals. And that's because you're doing a lot more deals a lot faster. So your investors are going to reinvest with you one after another after another. Okay, does that make sense? And then we're going to multiply that by 1.5, which is, again, taking into account that for every two investors, if we do things right, we should be able to get one referral. So at the end of the day, one investor is actually worth an investor and a half worth 50% more. Okay, so let's take a look through this with your PDF handout. And let's start with just an example of single family homes, buy and hold strategy. So again, seven to 10 years, the average net profit per deal, and this is a profit for you would be $100,000. Again, that's taking into account all of the different profit centers over that entire seven to 10 year period. All right. And on average, you're going to need one investor to do a deal because it's just one single family home. And on average, uh, an investor is going to do two deals with you over their lifetime uh, of the re working relationship. And if you do a good job, you're proactive, you should be able to get a referral for every two investors you have. So that means one investor is worth uh, one and a half altogether. Okay, so let's put the numbers in there. $100,000, that's from point A, the average net profit, divided by how many, how many investors you need to do that kind of a deal, so in this case, just one, multiplied by the number of deals an investor is going to do with you, then multiplied by the referral factor, uh, which is 1.5, so 100,000 divided by one, that's 100,000 times two is 200,000 times 1.5, or adding 50% on, means $300,000 
lifetime worth of an investor if you're doing single family buy and hold long term hold type deals like seven to ten years so that's pretty huge that's bigger than my lifetime value of an investor for um, rent to own deals but again rent to own deals are shorter term so we're looking at three or four years typically all right so it makes sense the longer the length of the deal the more you're going to more money you're going to make but it's just going to take a little lo bit longer to do that now let's look at another example something a little bit different here and let's look at small and medium sized multifamily properties and this we're going to need more than one investor to do a deal because these kind of properties are more expensive right so we're go again we're talking um, I believe we're talking here uh, five to ten units five to ten rental units per property okay and let's say on average your net profit on a deal like this over seven to ten years would be three hundred thousand dollars because again it's a bigger type of a property so you should be making a bigger profit and because it costs more chances are you need a couple of investors to come up with the money for the down payment a closing cost property transfer tax uh, contingency fund etc for this kind of a building and again if on average they're going to do two deals with you over their lifetime and again we've got that 1.5 factor for the referral factor then here's what the calculation looks like so again average net profit of the deal divided by the number of investors multiplied by the number of times number of deals the investors are going to do with you over the lifetime multiplied by your referral factor so we look at the numbers 300,000 divided by 2 that takes us down to 150,000 times 2 brings us back up to 300,000 add 50% or multiply by 1.5 comes up with $450,000 lifetime worth of an investor partner and money partner to you if you're doing small to medium sized multifamily properties okay one last example here, here example here let's say we're doing single family home but we're doing buy fix and sell flips okay so a smaller profit per deal twenty thousand dollars but again typically you're looking at three four five type months for these kind of deals so you're doing a much bigger velocity of deals you're doing them a, a lot faster again one investor to do a deal but because these are a lot faster type deals chances are the investors are going to invest more than twice with you right because they're a lot quicker type deals so let's say six is the number of deals an investor is going to do with you if they're happy with that and again we've got the whole referral factor there as well as 1.5 so twenty thousand dollars divided by one investor is twenty thousand dollars multiplied by six deals brings us up to a hundred and twenty thousand uh, dollars multiplying by 1.5 again to bring in that referral factor that means adding 50 percent on to the value of that so that brings us up to one hundred and eighty thousand dollars lifetime worth of an investor to you for doing buy fix and sell type deals all right so again what's an investor really worth to you answer a lot all right so here's a conclusion just one investor partner can be the difference between uh, struggling and really accomplishing what you want to do with your real estate investing it's and a happy investor is going to do more than one deal with you and if you do things right they are going to refer other investor partners to you as well now in the next video I'll be showing you you're going to discover who you should focus on attracting as your ideal prospective investors and even more importantly who you should avoid at all costs now knowing this is a vital piece of information that's going to make all the difference in your success with raising capital so keep your eye out for that upcoming video all right now again what's the number one obstacle that's slowing people down and that is lack of confidence to approach potential money partners so again what's the solution to that well it's becoming being seen as an expert when it comes to real estate investing you need to be really crank up the trust factor you have to uh, have people trust in you knowing that you're going to do a good job of investing their money in your deal so you need to be credible you need to be seen as a real estate investor expert also we want to focus on getting people calling us instead of us calling them we want to create that instant credibility and trust and then when we do sit down and talk with them we don't want to hard pitch them we don't want to arm wrestle them into doing a deal we just want to have a conversation show them what the options are 
and allow them to make an educated decision. So in order to help you do exactly this, I'm holding a complimentary masterclass in just a few days that's going to provide the solution to any lack of confidence that you might be feeling about attracting money partners and getting them to invest with you. It's called the trust factor. So this is all about how to position yourself as an expert real estate investor, easily attract investor partners and raise capital quickly. In fact, I'm going to show you seven different ways to create instant credibility, to have your prospective money partners and joint venture partners see you as the go-to real estate person to do deals with. So I want to invite you to click on the button below to find out more about this masterclass and to register for it. All right. Thanks a lot for watching. See you soon on the next video.